Hi, I'm Zach Smith from Route 113 Boat Sales. Today we're going to be doing another one of our uh, video owner's manuals, this time on the Cobia 301cc. So with that said, let's hop up and take a look at it. So moving up top on the Cobia 301cc, we're going to start with the battery switch compartment in the battery area, which is where you're going to start every day. So moving down here, we'll take a look at it. So inside of our battery switch compartment, we have four switches. Our port start, our starboard start, our house, and our emergency parallel. Under normal operating conditions, you would have your port and starboard engine batteries on, as well as your house battery. The emergency parallel is for when you get on the boat and your starting batteries are dead, you can parallel them and jump your engine batteries off of your house. Right below that, we have our power steering breaker. If your optimus steering system should fail and stop working, check this breaker, make sure it is not tricked. Right below that we have our helm panel breaker. This is the breaker for all the switch gear on the dash. Below that we have our rear access, bilge access breaker. Bilge access door stopped working, check that. Followed by our bow table breaker, our stereo amplifier breaker, and our main electronics breaker. This breaker runs to the fuse block on the back of the mirror inside of the console. Coming up top here we have our stereo memory breaker followed by our forward and aft bilge breakers, followed by a blank accessory breaker. If any of these items stop working, there's a little nipple here, press this back in to reset the breaker. Below that we have our windlass breaker. When the windlass breaker trips, the yellow tab pops out, simply press it back up to reset it. <clears throat> the windlass is a winch for the anchor, not a winch for the boat. It's not uncommon that the this will trip if you're overloading the windlass. Again, just press that little tab back up to reset it. Last but not least, we have another blank accessory breaker. Moving down into our battery compartment, over here we have our port and starboard engine start batteries. They're both labeled. Moving to the right of that, we have our two house batteries. The house batteries charge off of isolator wires, which are these, labeled, these wires right here labeled ISO. Up above that, we have our 100 amp breakers for our isolators. If either of these breakers trip, your house system will not charge. You'll get a low voltage alarm on your Garmin while you're running the engines. Check these breakers, make sure they haven't tripped. If they do, just simply press them back down to reset them. Up here, we have our battery charger for all four batteries on the boat. There's a, a plug on the outside of the leaning post. You plug it in, it charges the batteries. Each wire has a fuse on it. These little wires are your charge wires. If any of the batteries stop charging, be sure to check the fuse inside of that case and make sure it has not tripped. Moving up to the helm of the Cobia 301 CC, we're going to run through all of our switches and electronics on this boat. Starting on the left hand side, we have our horn. <laughs> Moving one over from there, we have a middle position off switch. Um, up for running at night, middle position off, back for anchored at night, middle position off. I get a lot of dead battery phone calls. We come out to the boat and the nav light was left in the down position, the anchor light stayed on and slowly killed the battery. So middle position off on that. One over from there we have our forward and aft spreader lights. We have spreader lights on the front, sides and stern of the T-top. The forward spreader controls your side and your front spreader lights. The aft spreader controls the two lights on the back of the T-top. Overhead lights, this is another middle position off switch. There are five overhead lights on this hard top. Up for white, down, oh, I'm sorry, down for white, and up for blue, middle position off. One over from there, we have our cockpit lights. Cockpit lights are blue lights all around the boat. We have three in the bow, they're underneath the covering boards, they're everywhere. Light up the floor blue for nighttime operation. One over from there, we have our compartment light, which is our bilge light on this boat, followed by our port and starboard live wells. This boat is equipped with two live wells and two live well pumps. In order to use the live wells, you must screw the stand pipes in to the live well, it will fill to that level and then drain back out. It's very important that you screw the standpipes in, just don't push them in, they are threaded and you can damage them. 
coming over one from there we have our freshwater wash down in order to use any of the freshwater equipment on the boat the switch busts me on the pump will be running and pressurizing the system we have a freshwater shower on the port rear corner we have a freshwater outlet underneath of the starboard covering board we also have a freshwater outlet in the cooler area and then we have freshwater sink inside of the console one over from there we have our raw water wash down again this switch must be on to use any of the raw water pumps on the boat uh, we have a raw water outlet underneath of the port covering board there's a 25 foot white coil hose in your owner's bag um, that you can screw on there and pretty much hit anything on the boat there's additionally another raw water wash down point with a hose up in the anchor locker for getting sand muck debris off of your anchor Coming over one from there, we have our fish box pump out. This boat is equipped with four fish boxes. None of them will drain on their own. They must be pumped out via the macerators mounted in the bilge. This is a, mom or this is a momentary switch. Press and hold up to pump out the port. Press and hold down to pump out the starboard. Coming over one from there, we have our forward and aft bilge switches. And there are bilge lights right above that. If either pump comes on, the light will illuminate and let you know that it is pumping out, whether you turn the switch on or not. These are both automatic, and they both have float switches to pump themselves out. Um, if you see any of those lights staying on for a long time, it's worth investigating. Make sure there's no debris stuck under the float, making the pump run unnecessarily. One switch over from there is another middle position off switch. We have our underwater lights on the top, middle position off. And then down is your first accessory switch. In most of our rigging situations, we leave the accessories blank and wire the electronics to the electronics bus in the console. Next one over here, we have our windshield vent open and close, followed by our windshield wiper and our windshield washer. The windshield wiper is a two speed, fast and slow middle position off and the washer is a momentary switch the fill for the windshield washer is down inside the uh, forward storage compartment down to the left of your switch panel we have our windlass control up for in down for out we'll talk about that more when we get up in the bow right below that we have our push button start for our yamahas the yamaha f300s require the key to be in the on position the lanyard to be hooked up and the engines to be in neutral before you press it and hold to start. Coming over from there, we have our Bennett trim tab control. The Bennett trim tab control has indicators up and down both sides. Day and night mode by pressing the uh, moon on there and then a dimmer for the brightness. These are electric trim tabs, so touch and wait to see how the boat responds. They operate very quickly, so that if you press and hold it for too long, you can really lay the boat on its side. Coming over to our Yamaha binnacle, we have an uh, a joint trim on the side here, and then individual trims on top of the binnacle. There are also two lights that are going to illuminate inside this orange circle. They should be blue at all times. If you get a yellow or orange light on either control, um, give me a call. We need to get a code red and see what's going on with it. I don't see any issues out of these, but if you wanted to, or if you need to, get an orange light, give me a shout. Next thing is, on the side here, we have a button we can press. Press and hold the button. Put the engines in gear, neutral, and the lights will begin to flash. You can then rev your engines up without being in gear. Bring it back to neutral. The lights will go solid, and then you can shift again. Coming over from there, we have our Optimus 360 gauge. This is going to give us all the readouts on our steering, uh, along with any codes or errors that the system may have. Right above that, we have our Media Master 100. I'm going to link another video on just the Media Master 100 down in the uh, About section that to walk you through how to pair phones and all that kind of stuff on that. And last but not least, our Yamaha 6YC gauge, which will also have a video link down in the comment section. With that said, let's move up to the bow. So starting up in the bow of the Cobia 301cc, front and center here we have our nav light. It is a pop-up nav light. 
there's a tab on the top of it, pull that back and it pops up, push it back down to lock it. Inside of the windlass compartment, a couple things to know about. First and foremost, we have our anchor chain here. This must be hooked up whenever the anchor is not in use. I've had a couple of these anchors fall while the customer was running and do a lot of damage to the bow. Could have been easily avoided if this was hooked up. Right over here, we have our raw water wash down hose. The switch on the dash must be turned on in order for that to operate. Moving aft, two pop-up cleats, one on each side. Four tight rod holders up in the bow. Lift and twist to open up the gasketed storage on both sides. Underneath my feet here, we have the bow table. The bow table controls are located right over here on the starboard gunnel, up and down. This can stop at cushion level and be a day bed or come all the way up and be a table. As we come down inside of the console, couple things to know about down here. First and foremost, we have all of our breakers for a switch gear on the dash on the right hand side here. Coming around the opposite side, we have controls for our cabin lights. This is the overhead light and the uh, illuminated rail here. Behind the mirror, we have our fuse block for our electronics. This boat was rigged with electronics. We have fuses and all the wiring will be here, as well as our Optimus 360 NEMA 2000 network. Coming down here, we have our toilet flush, which is the one that says electric head, and then our overboard discharge, which is the one that says macerator. There is a Y valve located behind this access plate that allows you to switch between pumping out of the dock and discharging into the ocean. Again, freshwater sink here. The switch must be on on the dash in order for that sink to work. We have two drawer storages, top and bottom, as well as toilet paper holder down here. As we come up, in order to close this, you must pull and then close. Flip out bow backrest, fold and store, or can lift out to be taken inside. Moving down the port side of the Cobia 301cc, we come to our first of four fish boxes. Again, these fish boxes are macerated and must be pumped out using the, mass, the fish box pump out switch on the dash. Up for port, down for starboard. We have one of our two fuel fills right here. This boat has a singular tank located in the middle of the boat, but it has dual fuel fills, one on either side. As we come back underneath of this port gunnel, we have our raw water wash down port. There's a 25 foot white coil hose in your owner's bag. Um, to use for that, you can hit pretty much the whole boat with that. In the back corner here, we have our freshwater shower. And as we come across to the opposite side, we have a fr another freshwater wash down point here and your freshwater fill in the back corner of the boat. In the leaning post, flip this up to expose another freshwater shower with a sink and a cooler. Right below that, we have our Plano tackle box storage, as well as our drawer storage here. Coming over here, we have our dive door. There's a latch on the bottom of the dive door that must be unlocked. This must be open and the dive door swings open. There is a dive ladder located underneath of the gunnel here that drops in and locks into these two holes.
Coming up this side, we have another fuel fill. Again, singular tank, two fills. Then we have our LeBrock captain's chairs. We slide forward and aft and have fold down armrests and fold down bolsters. Up top here, we have our rough revolution outriggers. There is a flip down latch on this that locks it. Fold that down, putting the outrigger out. Once it's out, it'll twist and lock in place. Again, twist the handle and then fold it back over. And when it gets back, it'll rotate and lock in place again. In the stern of the boat, we have a large bilge access, which we're gonna take a look at now. So as you can see on the Cobia 301cc, we have ample bilge access. As we come down here, in the bottom center, we'll see our bilge pump. To the left of that, we have our freshwater washdown pump. That's the SureFlow Pentar pump right there. Right below that, we have our live well pump for the uh, starboard live well. Coming across, we have the live well pump for the port live well and the raw water pump right there. The raw water pump and the port live well share a water pickup and that valve must be open in order for the pump to work. Additionally down here in the back we have our macerator pump on both rear corners of the bulkhead. Those are your fish box pump outs. As we drop down here again, on the starboard side we have two through hauls. These are our deck and live ball drains. And on the port side, we have three fuel through hauls. Again, live well and deck drains. Coming around to the front of the bilge area, we have our Sea Star steering pump. On that pump, we have a valve that allows for bypass of the pump. If you have an optimal steering failure, we can open that valve, straighten the engine, and then come in using your throttle to turn the boat. I hope you never have this situation, but it is there if there's a problem. Moving to the back of the Cobia 301cc, we have our Yamaha 300. 4.2 liter outboard. This yellow top dipstick right here is the, how you check your oil. There's two holes on that dipstick. You want the oil level to be somewhere between the two holes. If it's a little higher, a little low, it's not a big deal, but just make sure it's between those two dots. Right next to that we have our oil filter. Your first oil change on this boat is going to consist of an upper lower oil change, fuel water separator and primary fuel filter cup change. This is going to be done at 25 hours. Every oil change after that will be done every year or every 100 hours, whichever comes first. At two years and 200 hours, we add spark plugs to the mix. At three years and 300 hours, we add water pump and thermostats to the mix. 400, we go back to spark plugs. And at 500, we start inspecting timing belts. Your break-in period on this engine is going to be your first 10 hours. If you read the owner's manual, it'll tell you your first hour do this, next hour do this, next hour do this. I'm here to tell you, vary your RPMs. Uh, run for a little while, 3,000, 4,000, 3,500, 5,500, 5,000. You do need to open the engine all the way up to 6,000 during break-in. The idea is for the engine to seat at the full RPM band, not just one speed. Right here, we have our flush port. Unscrew this. Pull that off. There's a little yellow garden hose washer inside of there. These, you can get a pack of these at Ace. They're nothing special. Keep some on the boat. Uh, if that doesn't seal properly up against this, the engine has the potential to overheat. Hook the garden hose up to this side. Let the water run for five or ten minutes. And screw it back on when you're done. Making sure to snug it down really good. As we come 
come around the back center of the boat. In the middle there, we have our drain plug. The drain plug has an O-ring on it. Do not over-tighten that, finger tight only. If you put a wrench on it, you'll bust the O-ring and it'll leak. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me cover. I'm Zach Smith from Route 113 Boat Sales, and thank you for watching.